Um, congratulations on this, Deepa. I, I really, you, really Thank enjoyed so it. My goodness. And okay, so what what got you thinking about I got to make a movie about these Sikh gangsters? You know, everything comes from the story. And when I first heard about the story of some of them, and I thought, my God, sitting in Toronto, this happens in Vancouver. I said, it's not real. It couldn't be true. And I read one story, then I saw another film, a, a CBC report. And I said, it is real. Hmm. And the, once I started researching it, I mean, I just, it was so, so different than anything that I'd even expected. I mean, it just broke every stereotype of what I thought of, of an immigrant that, uh, you know, I just said, this is something I really want to do. So what surprised you when you, you know, you started, you did your research and then you started writing. And then what kind of surprised you as you were writing the story? Uh, I think that, you know, the story is uh, inspired by true events and true characters and an, is an amalgamation of many of the term. I, writing about the, what, what made them into, because every culture has uh, has gangsters. Mm -hmm. It's not just unique to Indo-Canadian. I mean, they've been Jewish gangsters, they've been Italian gangsters, or whatever. Uh, and uh, but this was so specific culturally. Being a Punjabi myself, to realize how culturally embedded it was. The fact that many of them still stayed with at home with their mothers yeah. was something that just blew me away. <laughs> And, you know, and <laughs> just how much they respected their mothers and, and the, you know, the mothers got together. Uh, it was all so interesting and yet so familiar. And right. yet it's Canadian, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it, was, it was fascinating. So I learned, you know, once you have the main characters and you have the main story and the character arc, you start filling in their backstories. Yeah. Where do they come from? What's so important about Kamagata Maru? What is the history of the Sikhs? and what do they have to go through and how painful it's been for them yeah. and how difficult it is even to this age to assimilate was fascinating. And very violent. Oh, extremely. I mean, but all gangsters are violent. Well, I mean, yeah. They don't exactly play the violin. No, know? they don't. They don't. I mean, if you're going to be a gangster, you know, you've got to do it. Like, you own it. <laughs> you can't, it's not a half-assed job. <laughs> no, no, you can't be a quasi-gangster. You can't be a part-time gangster. No. no. You're going to do it, you got to do I it. I have a hobby and I'm a gangster. I don't think so. No, I don't no. either. Um, and then your casting. My goodness, you had such a great cast. I, like, I don't even know where to Start. But let's start with Randeep. I mean, hello. I mean, gorgeous, right? <laughs> and but you know, besides having the most beautiful cheekbones in the world, honestly, he's this. He's he's he really has a presence, and I needed somebody who was who who actually, when he was in camera, without saying a word, had an intensity that you know that's star quality. I mean, this kid has star quality. It's yeah. just amazing. Yeah, and then um, and then getting Morris, like oh. who is you know uh, people a star like on. <laughs> seriously, yeah, well, yeah. yeah, we'll talk about the clothes in two seconds, but but he, he is a star yeah. icon. Yeah. yeah, but you know he's also known for amazing work that he's done in Wes Anderson films. Uh, you know, he was in Darjeeling Express, and but, he's, uh, but this was like a really pivotal role yeah. for him, and he was, I think he's just wonderful. Well, one person who actually surprised me, and I had to do a double take, Paul Gross. <laughs> okay, how did you convince him to do the man bun? Uh, you know, it, uh, how to, he was, he's a good friend, so I knew that I wanted Paul to play Jamie, but, you know, he can't be Paul Gross. No. He, he had to be Jamie, and... Uh, uh, it's it's the whole thing in the film is that everything has to come from character yeah. you know that if if the character i don't know what show this is i mean if it's x-rated or not but you know you open it you know you, the first time you see him he's getting a blow job i mean you know, there's something weird about the whole thing so uh, you know to channel it <laughs> not for but, him not for him, <laughs> not for him. <laughs> paul is wonderful yeah, but he, he agreed he to is. do it yeah and uh, i think we were talking about how to uh, it was paul's suggestion he said, you know, maybe I should have a man bun. And I said, let's try it. I mean, and, he, and it was so absurd. And I said, perfect. It worked. <laughs> it, it worked. It, it so worked. worked. And like it I worked. said, I, I, it took me a minute to go, that's not Paul Gross. That's, like, that's the idea. Yeah. It, it didn't have to be Paul Gross, yeah. you know. He, had to, he, he actually channeled Jamie <laughs> and owned him. You know? It was awesome. Yeah. Okay, and then it was so nice for me, just as a fellow journalist, to see Monica Deal. I hadn't seen her I in so know. many years, you know. And Monica is wonderful, and she was like the drama queen wife, you know. Yeah. She was perfect, and I I saw her again, and I think it, she was uh, the, the guest speaker at uh, at a function at the Rom uh, of the Kamakata Maru. They were doing a centenary, and I thought, my God, she's beautiful. Oh, yeah. She looks so elegant. This is what I want for Pinky Greywald. Yeah. So that's the way we cast. Yeah. I mean, 
I saw Waris in an ad, a Gap ad. Of all things. Of yeah. all things, yeah. sitting, you know, in London. Yeah. And my daughter said, my God, Mom, he looks exactly like Manny. So there you go. You know, yeah. That's how it happened. I love how you how they're all described as like Manny the Joker and all yeah. that. And, and so when you were writing that, like that was obviously very intentional from the beginning, or to give them those types of you know. Their... No, that's all in post production. That's in editing that comes. Oh really? Yeah, okay, yeah, so yeah. you didn't write it as Manny the Joker? No, no, not at all. It was it, it, you know when we were doing the credits at the end, we were doing the post production. Yeah. That's why it felt that this is this you know you're introducing the Beaver Boys. Who are they? Who who is what are they in their essence? So, you know, it was Manny the Joker. Yeah. I mean, he's a psychopath, but he's still a Joker. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Guri the Gun, yeah. et, cetera, et cetera. Oh, I loved it. I, I just thought yeah. it was from... Uh, yeah. That's No, I, I think it's great. I think uh, now on all your films, you're going to have to give people their monikers. I know, you know? my God. <laughs> <laughs> and the clothes, we were talking about that. So stylish. I mean, I love that these guys, you know, they go out, but they, you know, they're, it's all about the appearance. It's all about who, who you know, what they're bringing out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they mm -hmm. could be killers and whatever, but... Yeah. Always looking good. Yeah, if you want to kill, you better do it in style. <laughs> That's you know, you better have the bespoke suits and you better have the, you know, the pocket squares and it's it again. It 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 had Bonnie. It had to come from the character. Yeah. You know, there is a point where Jeet says, uh, if you want to be seen, you've got to commit to being seen because thematically, Biba Boys is like all my other films. You know, it's uh, it's about identity. Mm -hmm. It's about assimilation. It's about immigration. It's about the need to belong. Yeah. And uh, these are the guys. You know, it's power, respect, money, style. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What kind of um, uh, attention or, or reaction are you getting from the Sikh community? Well, you know, it's it's always difficult for an immigrant community, whether it's Sikh or whether uh, it's Italian or whether it's Chinese or whatever, yeah. to to have a, ne a, a a section of their community that's negative portrayed, because as immigrants. We really want to belong. We don't want to create waves. We want to be accepted. That's totally understandable. And we want, we are in awe of the larger community. That's, that's important and that's understandable. So I think that uh, uh, some will are disturbed by it, will be disturbed by it. And that's good. Yeah. Because unless we talk about it, instead of wanting to sweep it under the carpet, we will not be able to have give these these young guys who who are dead by the age of 28 mm -hmm. you know we we need to help them i mean you know that's that's our responsibility as a community so luckily there's a whole section of the community that says this is a film that's going to be seen by a large part of the youth and and finally by the end of it you know it's it's entertaining it's it's breaks all stereotypes but the message is really crime doesn't pay. Yeah. And so we have to accept it unless we acknowledge something. There's no films don't change anything. No. You know that's no. the reality. Yeah. But they can start a dialogue. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I I thoroughly loved it. So what are you working on for next year's TIFF? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I come How about sleeping? <laughs> How about sleeping for about like two years? <laughs> <laughs> this one was, did it drain you working on this one? Not at all. Oh, it okay. really invigorated me. I mean, I it was uh, it was you know I went to do an area that I knew nothing about. I'm, I'm so anti-gun. I mean, yeah. the whole policy of it just is, I think, uh, it's an anathema on many levels. And, and I, but I learned so much about them and so much what, you know, why, why crime, in fact, you know, in a weird way is legitimizes assimilation. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, there were so many factors that was, uh, I learned something new every day. And if you're learning, then you aren't bored. Yeah. You know? Exactly. Well, congratulations on this. I, I thoroughly you. enjoyed myself, Thank really, you. and uh, I just want to know who the tailor is so I can get my son some of those suits. They are pretty awesome. Were they, they all made here in, in Toronto? Uh, or they, they were, uh, yeah. No, you know, we, it was very interesting. We uh, we did the first suit here. I have a wonderful designer called Joanne Hansen. Yeah. Let me plug Joanne. She's really smart. Yeah, <laughs> Why good. not? Give Beautiful stuff. It's cute. Yeah. Nice stuff. Yeah. So, but, you know, the first suit that we actually, a friend of mine who's Italian, Federica, we looked at and we said, okay, let's design this one. And we couldn't get it made here because they were, they cost like, what, 2,000 bucks to have them made. Yeah. So we sent us, we had one made and we sent a sample of it to my costume designer okay. in India. Nice. Uh, who made them for like 200 Dirt. bucks. Amazing. And pure silk ones. 
So then we had them copied and Joanne took over and uh, it was, they're all handmade. I think you have to start the Biba Boys line. I know, maybe I'll get rich because I certainly am not by being a filmmaker. <laughs> well, it's about time. No, seriously, if you're sending them off and making them for 200 bucks in India, then go for it, I say. I know, I mean, I, who wants to be a filmmaker? Just yeah, yeah. Like Taylor. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Listen, a whole new second career for you. But it's interesting yeah. what's yeah. happening, you know, because the guys walk anywhere and people say, Oh my God, they're the Biba boys, yeah. you know, and it's become the Biba look, which I find very funny. Yeah. But, you know, it's great. Whatever. Yeah, you know, whatever, uh, whatever works, whatever, right? Whatever floats. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations. Thank Always you so great much. to talk to you. And, Thank uh, you, Best of luck with this.